Well, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for sticking with us. This is Why in the Morning. Welcome back. And of course, uh, uh, this is Why254 TV, your number one youth station. We are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya, also streaming live through our website. And that's www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. Now, my name is Ram Aguko. It's a pleasure being with you on this fun Monday morning. Let's talk about youth and politics today. And of course, uh, remember, even as we uh, discuss matters concerning youth and politics, we value your feedback. We welcome you to join in on this conversation that we are about to have today. And uh, joining me in studio, I am with uh, aspirants vying, vying for different positions, different counties to my far right. I am with Beatrice Cairo. She is vying for the gubernatorial seat as the deputy governor for Kiambu County. Karusana Beatrice. Sana. You're feeling well? Yes, very well. Uh -huh. Yes. We shall tackle matters concerning Kiambu County in a bit. And of course, next to me, I am with Donizia Njeri. She is an aspirant vying for the member of county assembly position. Uh, for Kasarani Ward, Karibsana uh, Indonesia. Thank you very much. Are you feeling also? I'm good. I'm awesome. So today I'm with the uh, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot fail to touch on that particular aspect because um, this time round we are seeing more women coming up to vie for, for political seats. We shall be able to tackle that also as we continue with this morning conversation right here on Why in the Morning. Let us know what you think about this matters that we shall be tackling. The hashtag is Why in the Morning at Ram Aguko. That is my handle in that Y254 channel, which is the official station handle. Also, let us know where you're watching us from. And uh, of course, let me start with you, Beatrice. Okay. Um, you're vying for the deputy position for um, deputy governor gubernatorial position for Campbell County. Yes. Um, tell us a bit more about uh, about yourself, Beatrice Tyro, for somebody who um, is getting to know you mm -hmm. okay. more today, mm -hmm. and uh, your party together with uh, the person that uh, you're vying with. Okay. Yeah. So as you have said, my name is uh, Beatrice Cairo. I'm a health economist. Uh, I'm vying uh, for the deputy governor. Kiambu County. We are an independent candidature mm -hmm. uh, with my running mate who is uh, Agnes Ndongo. Mm -hmm. Agnes Washuka Ndongo. She's the one vying for the governorship mm -hmm. uh, for Kiambu County. We decided to be independent because we wanted to bring in a new fresh breath uh, into these uh, politics of the uh, Kiambu County. Mm -hmm. uh, myself, I've been both in the public sector and the private sector in terms of program management, in terms of uh, engaging in the healthcare sector, in terms of development in various angles and sectors within Kiambu County and also in, in the larger public that is Kenya large. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for this time round, um, I'm grateful uh, to the governor who is buying, that is Agnes Nungo, for considering a youth this time round. Mm -hmm. Because for a very long, long time, the youths have been neglected. For a very long time, the youths have always been told that leadership is tomorrow, is tomorrow. So mm -hmm. we keep waiting mm -hmm. for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But has she decided the leadership of the youth is today? So they need also to be engaged on the, uh, the, uh, on the round table. They need to also to participate because if we don't have a, few, a, a generation that is being empowered, then there will be no generation in the future. So this is the time that the youths also need to participate. They also need to be part and parcel in the running of this uh, big country mm -hmm. uh, of ours in, in, in terms even in the county government. So that is what we are bringing on board. Right. And uh, yeah. her being also... Um, a leader in her own uh, self, she has also a lot to bring on board. Because we have seen, uh, for example, like Kiambu County, mm. the budget allocation for Kiambu County, only 2.7% is allocated for the youth, the women, and the children. Mm -hmm. Yet these are the largest chunk of the population. So because of these neglects that we have seen in the counties, we have, uh, especially for Kiambu County, we decided we won't sit on the bench. We need to arise and mm -hmm. also be participatory. You know, it's one thing to keep saying, uh, let's do this, let's do this. But it's another thing to also arise and participate. And, so, and, uh, yeah. and, and, and of course, um, I want to thank you so much. Yes, it's one thing to, to, to talk, yes. but it's another thing to implement. Exactly. But why you? Why should the people of Kiambu County say mm -hmm. that, you know what, let's, let's look at, 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 at Agnes yes. and, 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 and Beatrice. Yes. Why these two individuals? Why you? 
the reason why as one we mm. are passionate mm -hmm. passionate for the people not our stomachs for the people mm -hmm. because for a very long time we've had poor leadership management especially in Kiambu County why people get the position they sit on those positions but at the end of the day they have their own selfish interests and selfish gains such that to the level the normal average Kiambu person doesn't benefit at all so as we are bringing in passion as we are bringing in expertise as we are bringing in experience because the key problem in Kiambu County is the management of the resources of the Kiambu people that have been entrusted to the leaders for mm -hmm. them to manage for them to ensure their systems working for the people because one of the key role of government is ensuring efficiency and effectiveness of the services because the people have entrusted you mm -hmm. so you are the servant of the people and for us we are bringing in what we call servant leadership for to ensure effective and efficient systems within Kiambu County all right yes. all right let, yes. let me come to Indonesia yes. um, uh, I hope I pronounce it well Indonesia it's Indonesia uh, Indonesia yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pole, yeah, okay. my English teacher taught me well. Yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> Donesia. Yeah, Donesia. So Donesia, um, let, 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 let us know a bit more about what, uh, about what you're doing here. And uh, in, particular, in particular, I'm talking about you vying for the county, uh, for the ward rep yeah. for Kasarani. And uh, um, a bit more about your desire. Why are, are you desiring this particular position? Okay, to start with this, uh, my name is Donesia Njeri Jage, or Kwamta, they call me Gasheri Kega. Uh, I am a businesswoman in Nairobi County. I am a mother, I am a wife, all that inclusive. And let me say that going for the MCO in Kasarani World Representative is that I got a conviction, uh, let me say that I've been the word for some time, mm. but to get the leaders, the people who are coming to lead us, they, have no, they don't have the people at heart. So you'll find that, like my sister said, these people, all these leaders, they are doing these things for their own interest. But you find that the Monainchi down there is suffering and suffering and suffering. And so I sat and... After getting the conviction, I was like, oh, okay, I've never been to politics, but I've been to leadership, so where do I start, being mm. a first-timer? And uh, like she said, we are told that we are leaders. We need to be leaders of tomorrow, but we say, no, these are not the leaders of tomorrow. We have to be the leaders of today and let the today be today. And so I got a bold step, stepped out and told the people that I'm vying for the MCA, I want to represent them. And let me say, it's not easy battling nine men in the world. Mm -hmm. There are nine men, I am the only lady. <laughs> and lady. I see God in this because mm. I am also an independent candidate. And you know the hassles and tabs that were there in getting the signatures and the, even the photocopies and all that. But I thank God that we made it through. And congratulations, Beatrice, for being there. Mm -hmm. So Thank if you. we have independent people who want to lead, we have the party and all these things. Let us focus on a leader who is there to serve the people. Not people, not leaders who are there to serve their own interest. Let us make a choice and having a choice of choosing a leader by the qualities or maybe through the manifesto that we are going to bring to you. And let me say that our manifesto or my manifesto is, going, is tackling mostly on women, youth, and even that is job creation for the youth, the women empowerment, I call it pocket power for each and every person in my ward. So I look forward to leading the people of Kasarani and I hope that and pray that they are going to vote me. All right. Now, what, um, what do you believe makes you stand out from the rest of the gubernatorial candidates that we have for Kiambu County? Okay, for us, one, we are bringing in integrity. Mm. I am, uh, me and my counterpart, we are God-fearing. And for me, I believe that there is a sanctity of life. For the mere fact that we have human beings in existence, mm. you as a leader, you are a servant of those people. So with, when you go in with that mentality, knowing that you are a servant of the people, mm -hmm. then you go with a lot of integrity, with a lot of caution, with a lot of passion, defending the same, same resources. Because uh, one of the key roles of a governor is to ensure that the resources that have been entrusted to them 
uh, you ensure that you protect it. So you right. you definitely have to have that integrity. And in our services, in every various sectors that we have served, both even uh, the the governor who is running, that is Agnes Washukandongo. As she has served also in the municipal, uh, municipality of Karori, she has ensured that the, the resources that were allocated to that municipality have actually been utilized to the letter for what they were allocated for. Because what we want is accountable leaders. And for us, we are, we are going to have what we call an open door policy for the Kiambu people, whereby they can ask us questions. We live in a country where leaders don't want to be accountable. They don't want to be asked questions. They don't want to be asked, why is this, ro this road not working? Why is this hospital not working? For us, we want to encourage the people of Kiambu that it is going to be an open door policy right, right. where they can yeah. actually approach us interrogators say what they want for what they want their county to be done and that is what is lacking in our country we want to to remove that out of leadership where you can't be touched you can't be questioned you, know, you are above the law we want now to show the the Kiambu people and holistically the kenyan people that actually leaders are meant to serve you now, not you serving your leaders now, now beatrice let me let me be, be, be particular now in yes, this yes because i love the fact that you're you're trying to mention the particular areas that we, are, we have problems yes let me talk about water yes what's your plan in regards to providing reliable and sufficient water for people of Kiambu because we have places where water is a problem. Yes. And uh, as you connect that, I want you to talk about even the area of, uh, uh, the, there's some places that have to, uh, that, that goes on for, for days, even mm -hmm. weeks without without water. All right. And yeah. I believe you, you are aware of that. How, yes. what change are you going to make? So first and foremost, uh, one of the problems that was in the in Kiambu County one mm -hmm. was infrastructure for water services. Mm -hmm. So we need what water sanitation and sewerage go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So because of poor infrastructures that have been set up within Kiambu County. That is why some regions don't actually even have water. So we have other project waters that even come from uh, Moranga County that also feed into Kiambu County yes, and yes, other water yes. allocation mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. So once you set up the structures whereby water has to be directed into several of these sub-counties, that is where we need to put a lot of funding into it. So that at least the homes or areas that don't have access to this water, they are able to get this water. So there are also other areas whereby uh, some regions where you do what we call borehole water drilling. This is something the county sh is going to invest in so that those areas that maybe don't have water resources like rivers, they can actually even have borehole water which can ensure there's a lot of utility services for, for, for the water services. Mm. So, and you know that well, when there is no clean water, also health is also affected, exactly. right? Exactly. So when we improve water and you improve the sewerage, uh, definitely you're also going to improve the health of that county and number two you know that 31 percent of uh, the the revenue generated by kambu county is from agricultural sector mm -hmm. so we need to and, uh, and we need to improve the water services why so that we can promote a lot of agricultural farming within that county and once we improve the agricultural sector what will happen the women will be employed the youth will be employed because we're also looking at job creation activities wonderful yes wonderful. so because jobs are not necessarily Suddenly sitting in an office, mm. so we are trying to be broad. But now this time round, the mm. same use we are in uh, we are in our twenty first century, where technology has improved. So these same youths are the ones who are very innovative now and want to incorporate into now, that. Now let me take you a few steps back. Yes, you mentioned that water is connected to health. Yes. So far. Yes. For the past four months. Yes. Uh, and, 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 and I know it may be longer yes. for others. Yes. We have, we have health workers who have not been paid okay. in Kiambu County yes. for the past four months. Yes. And uh, of course, I know you are aware of, 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 of I, that. I, I am a healthcare worker myself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, what change do you feel needs to be done in Kiambu County? And if elected, do you believe that your regime together with your, uh, with your counterpart will bring a change for the health workers in Kiambu County? Very true. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one of the key areas is efficiency of systems. Mm -hmm. So one, one of the major problems that county governments have been experiencing is the delay of disbursement of resources from the national treasury. Mm -hmm. Are, are you getting? Yeah. So it's for yeah. us as, as a county government to know how can we push the national treasury to be ensuring it disburses the resources on time.
because this is the resources for the people so mm. it is the duty of the government to resist to, re to release the resources on time that's one number two what are the systems that have been placed in in terms of or if it's the payroll system mm. in terms of when the budget is allocation is the budget executed on time All you right. see these yeah. are issues of of, of leadership mm. whereby you have a budget mm. but because of either lack of integrity or either lack of passion or all service to the people mm. somebody does not want to execute a budget because remember in the county assembly they have already passed a budget which comes on the desk of the governor so it is for you to push systems to ensure that whatever budget has been set on your table has been executed on time right, so yes right, right, yes right. that that will push that will ensure we push let me come to you um yes. you can hear the, the the things that she's saying she's going to push for the people of Kambu. what are some of the agenda that you have for the people of Kasarani that you have said that you are going to achieve within the first 100 days once you get to office? Okay, for me in Kasarani world, I thank my sister that she has so much insight being a governor. How I wish you were in Nairobi. <laughs> teamed up. But let me say, like she's saying, mm. uh, about empowerment that is women and youth empowerment mm -hmm. unfortunately in nairobi what we get is the what do i call it these agricultural things that you get from roy and kamuru and all those areas but one she said about women empowerment through agriculture in nairobi you find that we have so many mamambogas these bike guys the youths who are jobless one thing i say is for our youth not that there are no jobs for the youth the jobs are there but where who, or who will let these youths get to know how to get these jobs? So my priority is for the youth, as I said, mm -hmm. women empowerment. Mm -hmm. With this, uh -huh. the moment we empower women, we empower the community. So, so uh, yes, you've said women, youth uh, are the uh, particular groups that you're going to handle. Yes. Now, within the first 100 days, what are those issues that you want to achieve? If you get into office concerning these particular areas that you target okay i was coming there mm -hmm. so in these first hundred days we have the money that is given by the government the youth fund and the women fund and even the for the pwds okay one thing is the money is there but there is no one to enlighten on the on how to get these monies so and if they know there's a lot of protocol that is there before getting this money released my work as an mca is to push to the MP or even to the county assembly, to the national, uh, the national assembly for mm. this money to be released. Like she said, on time because, and even to have the, what do we call them, the classes on how to get this, this money and how the youth are going to benefit. Mm. Let's say for an, I guess for an example, I am a woman. I get maybe to get this fund, like I be given like a hundred thousand. I'm told to pay in maybe in one year or two years. Mm. This money is going to boost me a lot in my business that I'm going to do. For the youth, I tell them, my work will be ensuring that this money comes to them so that it is going to help them. Let's say they are in groups of 10. They are given like a hundred K. They subdivide this money among themselves. So you find that maybe this guy sells oranges, another one sells cabbages, another one does this. At the end of the day, they are going to consolidate all this money and you'll find that they are going to make a profit. They'll be able to give the interest, they make their profit and they save something for themselves. Mm. We have them having families. Mm. They have families they want to feed, but they are jobless. What will they do? They start mugging us. So we say there's a lot of insecurity, but this insecurity can be curbed through giving them these monies or even knowing how to create these jobs for them and the moment they are very busy they're not get to be idle because we say an idle mind is the devil's workshop mm -hmm. so these mm -hmm. guys all these ladies all these women they'll be strategizing through the day so tomorrow i'll go to kamuru to get some cabbages or some skuma week to come and sell but the moment they are not busy they'll be saying like okay today we can go to such a home maybe do this we are going to wait for people as they come from job they get smuggled for the women too I say a woman, the moment you give, an, you give a woman like 500 shillings, being mm. that you are the husband of the house mm. or even the man of the house, mm. you find that this woman will be able to subdivide this money. In that house, 
you are going to eat, have a big breakfast and all that, and even save for chama. Mm -hmm. Through these 500. Okay. But mm. giving a man these 500 shillings, he'll be like, okay, nitafanya nini na pesa. So I say, empower woman, uh, and you'll see the change. Do, do you think that aspect of uh, women in leadership is uh, playing out during this time that you've been campaigning? Now that you mentioned that you're the only woman who is vying among all the men mm -hmm. in, 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 in Kasarani ward. Yes. Mm. Let me say, the ground has been very positive, let me say. And we are seeing that people are embracing women being in politics or nickname? being in leadership. <laughs> yes. Have they given your nickname so far? <laughs> nickname I'm Gasheri Kega. So any other hakuna. Hakuna yele wa mama kasarani wa mama wali. Ile mama kasarani kuna wale wakoju. But here ya huku wanasema sasa ni masaya ya mama. Masaya ya mama. And I thank God that ile symbol we are given by the other ORPP offices or the IBC, mm. I was given sa. We call it <laughs> e sa, 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 the clock. Comma. The clock and yeah. I say it's now time, it's about time now for women to be in leadership. Even if you look all over the world, things are changing and women are getting these chances and I say women, you are going to win it. Mm. This is the time for women and it's women time for all. Now, all uh, Beatrice, yes. um, still this is an issue of women. Um, mm. Interestingly, mm. I've not seen any other aspirants in, in, in for uh, a Kiambu County gubernatorial okay. seat yeah. that is uh, w uh, f completely women. Mm. Mm -hmm. There is mm. no other, mm. unless there is one I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of. Yeah. I think you're the only one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, uh, how different is it panning out for you, campaigning and okay. uh, trying to get the votes now that uh, uh, the gubernatorial uh, candidate, the governor, yes. vying yes. is uh, is a woman. Yes. You as a deputy vying for the same position, also a woman. Youth. Is and a youth. <laughs> <laughs> a youth. It is a youth. Youth. Yes. Uh, how different is it now? Mm. Um, the beauty of it, we're in the 21st century. Mm. And people have realized uh, issues are not gender. Mm. When I'm hungry, mm -hmm. as a woman, as a man, you're also hungry. Hunger doesn't, Hunger doesn't gender. know any gender. Exactly. Mm. Health does not know any gender. Mm. Uh, when it comes to work and earning, in, in terms of, does not know any gender. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we are now moving from gender-based issues and now to economical issues. Do we have somebody who has a solution to manage the issues at hand, irrespective of your gender? Because once we move away from fighting gender issue based, you know, fighting gender, maybe that's when as a region, even as an African continent, we'll be able to move forward. Because at the end of the day, we ask yourself, who can do the job? That's the question. Who can do the job? And that is where people need to be focusing on. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, given an opportunity, uh, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful uh, to Agnes. We are calling her Mama Nakazi. Mama mm -hmm. Ni Agnes. Why? <laughs> because she, this time around, she is the only one who has decided, let's take a youth. And for us, the youth, it, it, it doesn't matter whether you're male or female. So long as you're youth, you have not been brought on to the table to do it. So this time around, people are a bit civilized. Uh, people are, are, are a little bit uh, um, literate and realizing that even what, uh, it, it doesn't matter what your gender is. So long mm -hmm. as at the end of the day, can you deliver? Mm -hmm. That is where people should be focusing. Has that person delivered? Because obviously for the last 10 years, we have had uh, people who are male uh, seated uh, 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 as governors. And look, still the same issues are still pending. Because how can 2.7% be allocated in the budget for the hugest chunk of the population that is children women and the youth that tells you there is a problem somewhere so maybe this time around we need someone who is also going to focus on there on the 75 percent of the population that has not I... yet been uh, has not yet <laughs> been looked <laughs> has not yet been lo looked into but that does not mean uh. we do not revere the role of a man on in society uh -huh. we have to be clear on that here we are not just saying uh you know you know feminism where we now exclude the male gender is no 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 
we are saying we are just trying are you the one better placed with the solution to bring everyone on board there will be no discrimination and say now the men have been forgotten because i know sometimes people cry oh, oh the, the boy, boy child, child is the boy forgotten. child is forgotten <laughs> no 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 the boy child is not forgotten because one way or another the boy child the girl child, all came from a woman right mm -hmm. so at the end of the day it, it is for us to ask ourselves who has the best the, the the integrity who has the knowledge who has a way out or a solution out to help us as a community i i, I wish we had the time yes we would go to the nitty gritties i almost went <laughs> <laughs> Yes. We would mention the nitty gritties. You yes. mentioned uh, 24 billion. How many? Uh, uh, how many? You mentioned some some amount of money that was allo allocated. No, I was saying 2.7 percent. 2.7 percent of the budget. No, there's something billion that you mentioned earlier. <laughs> that I, I, unless I, I'm I'm thinking in billions, but <laughs> but. I wish you could be able to mention the integrities. Okay. But let me let, let, let's bring it um and, and give it a general loop yes. here yeah. and come to the youth pers perspective. Okay. And this go, goes to the both of you. All right. We've seen campaigns where youth have have uh, gotten rowdy. Yes. And 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 we see stones, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, being be, being thrown, you know, at vehicles, at choppers, yes. at at you know, and and people getting hurt and wounded. Mm -hmm. We need to make this election different, mm -hmm. yeah? And we need to start with uh, knowing what the role of the youth is yes. when it comes to promoting peace, especially during elections. Your thoughts on that, uh, 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 Donesia? Donesia is yeah. the name. So one thing I'll say is our youths, and I'm very sorry to say this, the moment we were doing the ID collections or even the, yeah, the ID collections, I noted that most of these youth don't have IDs and they also have no voters card. So you find that these youths are not voters. So what will happen? They are going to be used by maybe our opponents to make everything look rowdy for you. So I'll say, as youths, let everybody be engaged where you're supposed to be. If you're not going to vote, just remain at home so that you are not going to cause chaos. And if you are youth and you are going to vote, just vote, go back home. Because we want a peaceful election and we want to have, let me say, we want to have maybe getting back to our works after 9th August. This is a one day thing and can cost us too much of our time. Mm. And you find that the moment, mom, the moment we are not working, our economy is not growing. So I would advise like for the youth, let us not be used by any politician. And I'll say, for my case, being a woman, it's getting tough battling these nine men in my ward because you'll find that, ah, we am super at una any. But I tell them, the moment you're given 50 bob or even 100 shillings mm. and you vote the wrong person in because of the money he or she gave you, you are going to get into a root shock. Coming five years down the line, you'll be eating that 100 shillings for five years, not remembering that for these five years you're going to be suffering. So, yeah, because at the end of the day, you can't be able to sustain all these people on the ground. Mm. So what will happen is the little you get, maybe you give them the little you get, but you'll find that even tomorrow when you go back there, you know how these youths talk. Eh? Uh -huh. So you'll find that mm. today maybe my opponent has money. He comes, gives them. Mungine comes and gives them. When you go there, maybe you've gone with a hundred bob. For them, it is not like money. So mm. you find that you're going to be attacked by them. You can even have a physical attack. So I'll say for our youth, my bro, to kuena siasa safi, siasa ya money. So let us mm. focus on having a great Kenya where we are going to vote and vote wisely. But, 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 but now I think we need to change this this narrative. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm looking at the perspective of handouts and and and, and how it is it is affecting uh, voter turnout. Um, shouldn't we change it? Shouldn't we come out from from voting based on who gave me what yeah, yeah. to who has what in terms of content in terms of their manifestos in terms of their plans in terms of the things that they they believe in you know uh, uh, their, their 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 ethos and battles we should be talking about the things that actually matter you know uh, find that these are the same same people who now let's say the leaders hmm. or the politicians because i'll not classify myself as a, a 
a politician, I am a leader. And that's why you find that when you're going to hmm. talk to these people, mm -hmm. you're giving them your manifesto. There are those who are willing to listen to you. Like yesterday I did a door to door and these people were very, okay, where have you been? We need you. We want to have you there. We don't want these corrupt people mm. because they are those who are there for their own interest. Right. So I'll say, mm. we don't have to do the handout campaigns or the handout politics. Let us sell our manifestos, let us sell our agendas and we allow everybody to sell his or her manifesto to the people and people are going to buy the best. Let me come to you, Beatrice, on the same. Yeah, yeah mm. uh, the, the future of a nation or the future of a community is highly dependable on the youths or the quality of youths it has. Mm. So the, what, what that means, therefore, is that we have to ensure that the youth, because it's the hugest chunk uh, for crying out aloud. Yeah. It is the hugest chunk. So it is for us as leaders, how do we mentor this this group because tomorrow they'll be the one representing us when you're in your old age yeah. right mm -hmm. so if we, we if we bring out rowdy people violent people uh people who have no integrity people who think it's taking by force people who think they have to bribe their way uh to in, in, to, in order to get uh, services or in order to get certain position well that means that is the culture that is going to progress for even another 100 years 200 years to come so this time around even as uh, on the ground when you're engaging the youth, you're telling them, come, let us reason together. Mm. Can we have a, a reasonable? W w does it really pay when you're given a thousand bob, you eat, you go to the toilet, and then tomorrow your future is at jeopardy? Y you know, mm. you reason and tell them, who would you rather want? Someone who is calling you on the table, engaging you and asking you as a youth, what do you really want to be done? So some will tell you, can we uh, teach us more on agricultural farming? Can you help us in the, like now there's the orange economy. Economy. Do you, are you aware of the orange mm. economy mm. whereby creativity, music, art, mm. not necessarily uh, the athlete, you must be a runner, you must, you know, you must be in, uh, you know, in, in the sports industry. We're talking about content creators. Yeah, there's content creation, mm. there is music, there is creativity. Uh, apparently in Limuru, there are two youths who just finished high school and already they have created robots in terms of helping uh -huh. disabled people exactly so as a county government those are the talents we'll be seeking and looking out for those and funding you see a county government is mm. supposed to set aside funds so those two youths are supposed to be brought on board mm -hmm. Uh, what is it called? Push to the forefront, given investment in knowledge and tapping into that because that is a talent. The greatest asset of a youth is the imaginative aspect. You see, the old are able to give you wisdom and telling you, my son, don't go here because they have lived longer. But the youth have the agility of the mind. They are a bit creative. All they need is a little bit of direction. And this is where we come on board, whereby we're able to say, can you identify talent? Talent does not necessarily mean they are dancers or talent does not necessarily mean they're under. Talent could be innovative um, technology. Another one invented on how to help farmers track the weather using a, a mobile phone. So that is a youth who has come up with such a... Cause su the county government should be able to fund such a youth, support such a youth. Mm. Because mm. in the process, you'll even be helping the, the farmers who are maybe not youths, but they're also in the, in the, in the farming wow, industry. Wow, so wow. this is what we are telling... The, 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 the people of Kiambu, mm -hmm. that you voting in uh, a deputy governor who is a youth and a lady who has also managed the youth and worked and interacted with the youth, this is what it will project. Because at the end of the day, they'll be the ones to take over either way. Now, at the end uh, of the day. So, now, let me, okay. let, let me give you time because of the interest of time. Yeah. I want to give you each 30 seconds. Okay. Let's have a final word. Okay. And I want you to talk to your people. Yes. I'll, I'll start with you. Um, that is your camera. What is your parting shot? Ongana wa tuwako, kulingana na jinsi conviction. You mentioned conviction earlier on. Yeah. Uh, that is your camera. 30 seconds. Okay, okay. So, for my people in Kasarani Ward, this is your Mheshimiwa, your Honorable Member of County Assembly, Donation Jerry, ready to serve you with integrity, God-driven, and I urge each and every person in Kasarani, let's vote for a leader, not for a politician. Or let, let's listen to what I have for you. My manifesto is big and very soon, like on Wednesday, I'll be on the ground and I'll be selling my agendas to you. Listen and listen and vote wisely. Let's mm -hmm. have a peaceful election 
and maintain peace. Asante sana Donesia. Uh, one day we will uh, set another day that we will talk about particular issues affecting Kasarani people. Right? <laughs> but let me come to you Beatrice. Final word. Talk to the people of Kiambu County. Okay. To the people of Kiambu County, I would urge you that come on August 9th, 2022, come out in numbers, vote for us, Agnes Washukandongo for governorship with Beatrice Wangoi Cairo. We are independent candidates. We are God-fearing people and we have integrity and passion for serving the people of Kiambu County. Please just understand that politics is not based on handouts. Politics is policy issues policy-based issues, economic-based issues. This is what should be addressed. And try as you will not regret. God bless you as you do so come the 9th of August 2022. Asante sana. Yes. Asante sana. Next time, also say the same thing. <laughs> Tuangalia Mubia Kiambu County. Yes. Particular issues. Yes, yes. Mama, yeah? mama, barabara. We are ready. Security. We are ready. <laughs> We you're are ready. very much ready. You're ready? Yeah, very ready. <laughs> na mkuja na hiyo, hiyo nini? And uh, your the, the, the counterpart. Yes. Yeah, you're running mates. Yes. 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 I don't have running mates. Awe uko Uko sana. Uko sana. Uko sana. Uta kuja tukivi yako. Sawa. I love to have a name Yeah. Sawa. I wish you guys the best. Thank you. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. I love the enthusiasm. Yes. And, and I love the fact that you know what? It's no longer about agenda. Yes. Agenda is out of the, the, it's the out table. Of the picture. It's about what you're bringing on, on the, the table. On the table, yes. Asanda, Yes, thank you. I wish you guys the best keep doing what you're doing and thank of course you. looking forward to having more discussions. If we meet after <laughs> the <laughs> elections, uh -huh. let's talk about this again. Sure. Uh, we will do so. True. Asana, we'll Asana. No, for that, that to the end of that brings us to the end of this uh, conversation on youth and politics. My name is Ram Aguko. Keep engaging with us. We are taking a short break, but after this, we still have more coming up your way.